Hey everybody, welcome back to episode 35. Uh, how's everybody doing this week? Halfway to 70. That's true. I don't, I don't know what the significance <laughs> of that is, but it is halfway it's to 70. It's a lot. It's a lot. We've been kept, kept it going for a long time now, so I'm super proud of us. Uh, true story. It is a true story. It's funny because it's when we're thinking about things we want to talk about, um, there's so much going on in the world, in life, <laughs> yeah. and our lives and everything. Uh there is actually, I mean, there's a lot to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and most of it's bad. <laughs> um, one know. thing actually we we're going to touch on is in Chicago, um, and I know it's different where everybody else is, but the mayor um, um, just announced today actually that um, starting on Monday, that they want everybody to stay at home for the next three weeks, um, and they're recommending um not having any guests in your home unless they're essential workers, um, cancel Thanksgiving, avoid travel, and not only, not leave your house unless it's for essential needs like yeah. grocery shopping, um, things like that. And that's it, there's not any like new rules to that effect, but that's what across the state they're recommending. Um, they have, you know, I have for my job, I have to follow all this stuff uh, because it affects. Um, the practice of law, but um, but every part of the state in Illinois now is under some additional restrictions. They eased up a little bit, and then um, they imposed some more restrictions. So things like um, you know uh, now they don't. I, I don't think anywhere in the state of Illinois you can have um, dine-in restaurants that they had allowed. You know, reduced capacity indoor dining now. I think it's only outdoor carry out. And of course, it's November. Yeah. So that's not great uh, for the restaurant business. But, um, and, you know, restricting the size of meetings and, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, mask requirements, all that kind of thing. So, you know, it has gotten worse. But uh, if you look at uh, the maps now, it's really every part of the country is going through a really bad stretch right now. And, uh, <laughs> You know, it's getting scary. <laughs> I mean, you know, and it's funny because we heard in the summer some people saying, well, expect there to be a second wave of COVID in the fall. And apparently they were right, um, yeah. you know, because it's not it's not looking so good right now. But we were thinking a lot about, you know, the holidays and how to approach it. Over the summer, we were kind of thinking, are we going to be able to, um, you know, do Thanksgiving and all that? But it was so far down the road you, you kind know, of think like, oh, by that time, yeah. things will probably get better, you know, or whatever. Right. But now it's not looking good. Well, and especially for your side of the family is so large. So it's not like well, four people together. Uh, we're, we're large and uh, some of us are older. Yes. You know, it's funny. I, I can't, you know, in my family, not to, not to um, talk about them behind their backs, but among you know, in my generation, we're kind of like all in uh, vulnerable groups, really. Yeah, you're <laughs> you <know>? the youngest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, um, <clears throat> you know, we tend to be in pretty good health. Well, they do. I don't know about me, but my siblings tend to be in pretty good health. They take care of themselves. But, you know, age is a, is a factor, so that's kind of uh, unnerving. So we got both ends of the spectrum because we have, um, you know, the, the nieces and nephews, all, a lot of them have little kids, and then we've got, you know, those of us who are getting up there. So it's a little crazy. Yeah. It's very crazy. Uh, so how's it going where you live? You yeah. know, uh, and let us know um, what you're thinking. We're very excited, thrilled, beyond excited that we get to bring our daughter home for school uh, a week from tomorrow. Yeah. So going we'll be her. hitting the road and um, being very cautious, <laughs> getting her and uh, bringing her back. And we were actually... Just kind of talking about, we're so lucky we sent her where she is. She oh, picked yeah. that school because the their campus is like the lowest uh, rate of COVID anywhere. Uh, so that's been tremendous. Well, right. And we, we were just looking um, in the main newspaper in Champaign, Illinois. It's called the News Gazette. Um, there was an article today about uh, all of the counties in the vicinity of Champaign County and how the um, positivity rates have gone up um, and even, you know, hospitalizations have gone up. Although fortunately, the hospitalizations are still comparatively low. So that's a good thing. But the positivity rate has gone up quite a bit. 
in Champaign County itself, as of, I guess, yesterday, mm -hmm. um, it was like 8.4%. And, you know, obviously they want to keep it, you know, closer to five or, or lower if possible. Over the summer, it was around 1% right. before, you know, kids started coming back to school. But in Champaign County, it's like 8.4%. But if you but if they just look at the University of Illinois campus, that positivity rate for the campus is below one percent. It's like 06 percent. So it kind of shows you how their approach has really worked. You know, real aggressive testing. Very aggressive. Um, currently, um, the if I remember this correctly, because it changes from time to time. But graduate students, faculty, and staff only have to be tested once a week, still much more than the rest of us, but once yeah. a week, undergraduates two times a week. And if if they've been in any situation where like maybe someone in their dorm building, you know, um, was exposed or tested positive, or then they ramp it up, then they have to be tested three times a week. So, I mean, the real aggressive test of testing program, quick turnaround on the results. I was results. just going to say, very quick turnaround so you know what's going on. Very aggressive contact tracing. So if anyone, any student or staff member or teacher or whatever is, uh, you know, does test positive, then the local health district contacts them like, and they're, the students are told they absolutely have to answer the phone. If this number shows yeah. up on their put, cell phone. Put that number in your phone. Right, you they have to have answer, to answer it. <laughs> and so, you know, then they ask all the questions about where they've been and, and all that. And then they kind of spread out from there. Um, but, you know, on top of that, um, on top of the testing and the, um, um, uh, I'm sorry, contact tracing, then they also, you know, they have rules about wearing masks and rules about social distancing and rules about not gathering in you know crowds of a particular size and all that and they crack down and they enforce them yeah so I mean I think you know as as controversial as these things are and as unhappy as people are you know there are these examples where you can see pretty clearly these kind of restrictions do work uh, before it got to this point I, I was thinking of you know how, in the NHL and the NBA and the WNBA, because the nature of those sports is the players are, you know, like right on top of each other when they're playing, they clamped down, they, they had all the teams playing in, you know, set locations in these bubbles, so they weren't traveling. Not getting on flights. They were testing them constantly. There were restrictions on where they could go and all that sort of thing. And the NHL, I think, I think all three leagues, I know this is true of the NHL and the NBA, I think it's true of the WNBA, zero positive cases during that time period, right? Then you go to Major League Baseball, they had a restricted um, travel, they travel, but not as much, so teams just played other teams in, in the same region, uh, which why the Cubs had to play the White Sox so yeah, many times. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, and they had the testing and all that, but even there, because they did more traveling, you know, the incidence of cases was a little bit higher. They still did a pretty good job. Although one player got yanked in Game 7 of the World Series because he they got his test results and he oh, tested no. positive. He's on the field in Game 7 of the World Series. I did Series. not know that. Yeah, yeah. Once, once the Cubs were out of it, I just didn't know yeah, it anymore. Yeah, same, same thing. <laughs> I was like, is the, is the baseball yeah. still going on? That's, uh -huh. that's what I said. When Michael Jordan retired, I, as far as I'm concerned, the NBA was canceled. Was, yeah. <laughs> They just stopped playing. Michael Jordan and retired. we're done. We're done. Um, now we'll get a lot of heat from the LeBron James <laughs> fans. Um, but, but you know, so, I mean, there are examples of, you know, certain things that work and certain things that don't work. But we're glad to be going to get um, Claire. and So happy that she was safe and um, everything turned out good for her, that she was able to do it as much as she could with all the restrictions on there. And um, it's her birthday on Saturday, and we're going to be separated for the first time the first since time. she was born. <laughs> so that's a long time. <laughs> but you um, were when you were in college. Well, because your birthday could have fallen on spring break because it's in. It that actually time of did, year. and um, actually, so Claire's going to be nineteen on my nineteenth birthday. My back, my spring break, and my sister's spring break was back to back. So she went to SIU. So I went there for a week, and then on her spring break, she came to my school, and it was our nineteenth birthday. Um, so we got to spend that together. But I was I was away for all of my. I was just gonna say yeah, because you're April, and that would have been before school started. Right, and it wasn't a great time too because it's late April, so that's right when you're getting ready for finals and all that. Yeah. 
didn't really interfere with anything, but. Yeah, and actually Claire will be finishing her finals at home. So it's not that we're bringing her back, that school is over. Right. They're just bringing the kids back um, and she'll be home for two months. But they did recommend that um, that students who are going to, you know, some kids will stay on campus, but just about everybody will leave November 20th. And they'll be gone, you know, they'll be home or off campus for about two months before the spring semester starts. And they were recommending, you know, for two weeks before you go home, you should really isolate as much as possible. I mean, they didn't have to, they could stay with their, you know, their roommate, you know, and things right. like that. But they were supposed to restrict their activities during the two weeks before. And this is even before, you know, statewide, they started imposing more restrictions. And then they're saying that as you get closer to coming back to campus in January, for like the two weeks following that, they should try to restrict what they do. And when they arrive on campus in January, they have to be able to have two negative tests before classes start. So they have to arrive in enough time to get tested twice a few days apart and get right. the results. You know, so, yeah. And, of course, I think we talked about this before, but they're canceling spring break next year. Yeah. Because they don't want kids, you know, running all over the place, which, you know, I get. But. Yeah, and they'll give them a couple extra days off, but not like a whole spring break like normal. So yeah. um, that is sad. Um, so the challenge is like, what do you do for at least, especially Thanksgiving? Because, you know, things aren't going to change much. And it's two weeks from today, right? Right. Things aren't going to change much uh, between now and then. So that's a real dilemma. And, and uh, like in my family, it's, you know, we're not doing any big thing for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because uh, normally that's 60, 60 or 80 people. Well, that's an exaggeration. <laughs> it's a lot. It's in the 30s. <laughs> but it's a lot of people. And not everybody makes it because, you know, there are some people out of town and, you know, everybody has, you know, two family obligations and all that. So, yeah, but I mean, it's this year for Thanksgiving, uh, it's hard to, to see how we're going to do anything other than maybe do something remotely. Yeah, and we were, and now we have to kind of adjust our menu a little bit now that we have two vegans. So we're not going to get, maybe we'll just get a twenty-five pound turkey. And or, just have or it between what, us. what do they call the tofu? Um, yeah, tofurkey. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, but you can't like, do the thing where you stuff the chicken and the duck <laughs> and all that, the unless you can get all of those things made of tofu yeah. and stuff them in. <clears throat> Put the tofurkey in the turkey. <laughs> no. Well, you can do that, but then no one would eat it. Yeah. Um, I was actually just telling somebody, I'll just have to tell a funny um, Thanksgiving story. So I hadn't made my own turkey until like maybe like five years ago, maybe. Yeah, because we were usually going somewhere. We always for... went to one of your sister's houses, our uh, family, and then my mom would make it. So I never made a turkey. So the first year that I made the turkey, I was like super excited. This is awesome. I'm just going to backtrack a little bit. My my signature dish when I was growing up was um, roasted chicken. But what I did is I would put the chicken in a 9 by 13 pan, melt two sticks of butter, um, and then just continually baste that thing. So that was my signature dish um, when I was growing up. I would make roast chicken. Uh, so I've done that. But then uh, I'll never forget when you were cutting the turkey and I didn't know that there was like the neck in there and the giblets and all that stuff. Oh, we left it in? Left it in. Oh, okay. No, no I do remember that. Now that you say it. Again. And I was like, what the hell is that? But I didn't think of it either when we, you know, prepped it. it no. I totally forgot about yeah, it. Yeah, because it was like stuck way down there. So I, that is a tip. So if, you've never, if you've never made a turkey, there's a bag of bits in there. Yeah. <laughs> And we didn't make pate with the, <laughs> no. uh, the liver or whatever. Um, From then on, I don't keep it for stock or anything. I don't even like to look at it. We just I just yeah. toss it because no, no, thank you. Um, so that's my tip for me. And we don't, you if we, don't made a turkey uh, we don't deep fry them or we anything don't deep like fry that. it. And actually, you know, it, it is a very simple meal when you think about it because we normally do stuffing, which is easy on the stovetop. Though we don't, yeah, we don't actually stuff it. Don't stuff it. Um, so do that on the side with the Italian sausage and celery and onions, which is delicious. And then um, like mashed potatoes is easy. Um, biscuits. Like green beans. There's a lot asparagus. of starch. Biscuits, <laughs> yeah. 
stuffing, mashed potatoes. And every year we have all three of them. But then we love having like bar- putting barbecue sauce on the turkey and making sandwiches with that. Although we've done that with this is a roast too at the holidays. Yeah, I just like a I just like a turkey sandwich. That's actually to me that's the best part. Yeah, is, is the turkey is the sandwich. Turkey sandwich. After. I love it hot too, but um Someone in my office, speaking of not being able to like um, get together, they were talking about how they're going to do kind of a Zoom or Microsoft Teams kind of thing with their family, and they're going to have a pie contest. A little hard to figure out how. You, <laughs> <laughs> what they ought to do, they ought to do, is make the pies in advance and then ship them to each other. Right, and then you could then they them. could really taste them and, and right. judge them. But I don't think they're going to that extreme. I think they're going to like pretend judge. I was saying you could taste your pie and be like, this is the best pie I've ever had. We have a winner. <laughs> I guess. But it, it also gives you something to do. The problem with like the Zoom and, and, my, and Teams kind of thing is that, you know, how long can you stay in front of your computer? We put it up on the TV screen. Yeah. So at least it's a little bit, um, you know, it's a, I, I don't know, it's a little better. But it's hard, you know, normally when you're in a crowd of people, you get up and you walk off and you go into another room and you talk to somebody else or whatever. If you don't want to talk to somebody <laughs> yeah, else, you're right. like, okay, I'll, I'll be right back. That's what you really <laughs> need to do is you really need to have multiple rooms and people are in different rooms and you just go back and forth on Zoom. Say, so right. it is like having a break right. of like... Just logging on to one thing and then you get tired of that, you log <laughs> off, you log on to something else. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. We should do that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we just thought we uh, were wondering what your plans were for the holidays. If you thought about it, um, and uh, just let us know what you're gonna do. So. And then, and then of course we'll have to figure out. We'll have to address Christmas another time because that'll be a whole yeah. other thing. A month later, who knows what'll be going on? I know, so crazy. Um, but we hope you all, you guys are having a great week so far, and we will um, touch back on Saturday with our next episode. Uh, so see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.